today. And welcome to the swamp. <laughs> um, let me just get you all hooked in and ready to go. I know. It's crazy times today. So welcome, and I am in between a video takes at the moment, and um, I'm just kind of killing some time in between um, the videotaping. And so I am actually filming a pattern that is years old, and I am um, I'm kind of tired of the question about it. And it's not a it's not a hard thing. It's just people just want clarification. So it's a boho bag my friend kelly has been working on this bag actually she's made several so i just finally biting the bullet i got an email last night which i have not responded to that um they need help and so i am um, just trying to solve that issue i'm just kind of doing it so you can let me know where you're from today crochet or knitter hanging out what are you doing today um daniel's putting around in the the garden I'm just sitting here doing my thing here on the recording of the videos. I'll get rid of that out of the way. And yeah, so what's on your mind? You can let me know what you're thinking. Uh, who's going to be the first up the chat today? Um, you can let me know in the comments once you're ready to go. So anybody chatting or anything? I don't see anything yet, so I'll wait patiently. Wait for the chat to start. And some of you may have started already. I just cannot see it on this end yet. So, but we'll figure it out, right, technology. So I kind of just putting away. Last night I was teaching at, um, at the Sea Cadets. It's a local division. And uh, anyway, you know, the nice thing about teaching kids is that, um, you know, they're more open-minded where you teach an adult and they just lose their mind so fast where kids are so determined to go. So uh, the top chat does not allow, the top chat does not allow all comments. So let me just, let all messages, oh, there you go, oh, there you go. So. Wendy just messaged me, so she says, you don't got your settings right, so, and I don't, of course. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so, um, yeah, thank you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. She's the brains of the operation, just so you know. But now I can't see any comments again, so let me just try again. Uh, live chat, super chat, hide all chat messages, there you go. Okay, here it goes. Okay, so... We have North Carolina in the house. There you go. Love my glasses, somebody says. And Wendy says um, she's welcome. So just moving along in this pattern and just trying to get my stuff all organized as we go. Um, I figured this pattern is really quite an easy pattern to be able to do. And so I did the Prince Edward Island Fiber Festival over the weekend and returned on Saturday night. And uh, Prince Edward Island is only four hours. Like the actual town is actually four hours from my home. So it was a quick drive, uh, relatively speaking. So it's about three hours to Prince Edward Island uh, itself for me. And beautiful, most pristine place that you'll ever see. And uh, yeah, so I'm working on the Boho um, bag pattern by Jeannie. It was many years old and um, that's something I kind of working through. Um, I didn't think it was going to take too long, so I just decided to bite the bullet and just start filming today. Um, so yeah, so do you want to, so I'm using a yarn genie in behind the scenes, which is just holding on my balls, or my ball. And I just it's spinning freely as I crochet. I was kind of obsessed, I've already several about an hour or so already into filming and I was trying to crochet at the speed so that the ball never stops rotating. So it's just a nice easy click space and then I wondered about doing a, a, a genie pattern there. There, um, Hey QDB2D, I like that pattern, want to share it. 
yes, I am on, I'm just on video camera today, but it's called the Boho Modern Day. It looks like that. So my printer is not working properly, so it's not printing any color for whatever reason, but I think the color is just dried up or something. It's kind of like me, old and dried up. <laughs> Here all day, folks. Yeah, so Marsha has given me a tip of $9.99. Thank you so much for that, Marsha. I appreciate that. Any tips that come in like that are just put right towards the production of the free videos, and we appreciate that a lot. So no pressure to anybody. Okay, so working on a cr uh, prayer shawl, says Deanne. Um, so ghost jellyfish. And Marsha says that she loves the channel. So thank you so much for joining us today, Marsha. It looks like you have the yarn seed. It looks like you're new to our membership program as well. And uh, welcome aboard that. Um, always new stuff coming. Um, I'm working ahead. So I have to decide, maybe you can help me decide I have to decide, there's a Christmas um, pattern that is coming out that is really massive by Yarn Inspirations. Um, it kind of goes with the whole theme of Christmas, obviously, with um, 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 with Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus and the whole nine yards. Anyway, there's two characters that they've developed, Yarn Inspirations has developed, that are absolutely just adorable, complete with outfits for Santa and Mrs. Claus. And they've asked me if I'm interested in filming that up, but it would have to be done as a series because the, the pattern's huge. I don't even know how, I want to say the pattern's at least 20 pages, maybe 15, 20, you know, typical man over exaggerating the number. Um, it's a big, big, big pattern. So um, the PDF is not ready yet, but the, um, the document that the designers used is ready for me to use at any point. So anyway, I've been kind of just humming and hawing about that, whether amigurumi is not really my specialty. And uh, so I don't know whether to do that or whether um, I'm just kind of wasting time. So I don't know. So who knows? I don't know what's going on. Who's on first at this point? Um, I did get a, a box in from Australia. So one of our crocheters has sent uh, Kelly and I a box of candy for Wednesday nights. So that came in yesterday all the way from Australia to send us some chocolates and some hard candies and stuff for our stitch uh, night here locally. So um, we'll be uh, obviously munching on those. Tonight it is Wednesday. So it's Wednesday here in my time zone. And uh, tonight is always it's stitch night here locally with my group. So we had a good time. So anyway, um, had a really super time at the PEI Fiber Festival, and um, I end up, uh, before the festival started, I went to a diner and I ate by myself, and there was these three women kind of looking at me, right? So um, they can tell I'm going to the festival. So they said, well, um, I don't, we don't mean to be nosy, and I turned to them, and I said, yeah, but then you are being nosy. And we hit it off so good, and so by the end of the diner, because I sat at my own table, I felt like we just needed a cheesecake just to solidify the friendship. It was just wonderful. And then these three uh, women turned into eight women. Uh, so we end up finding like-minded people, just relaxed, easygoing at the festival. And so each of the evenings during the sip and um, stitch lounge, oh my God, we would find each other and we'd run into each other throughout the festival. And uh, we touch base, are you going to the SIP lounge later? And I'm like, yeah, of course. And so we hooked it up, um, um, hook, hooked it, they are knitters, but um, we just had such a riot together. Uh, we actually got told to shush a few times because we were just, you know, you felt like you just found friends that you haven't ever met before and you just felt that connection. And anyway, it was so much fun, so much fun. It was totally worth going for me just to be able to, um, but what's kind of funny is that um, I went to the show and you know me, I'm, I'm pretty off the cuff with my humor and I drop language because I'm a sailor and uh, well, not literally, but my mouth is. And anyway, so I used the F word to describe something and it was almost like that was like the initiation to this group. And anyway, as soon as I did that, the rest of the girls just, when I say girls, the women, um, the rest of the girls were like, um, 
just completely sat back in their chairs and just let their guard down and we had such a good time and I think it just takes that permission for people to be themselves and anyway so it became really quite a, a fun and the humor just got raunchy as hell which you know I'm all over raunchy so raunchy is my middle name and uh, we just had such a wonderful time together and uh, if anything during the festival that was my moment um, at the show that I absolutely loved great show floor People were, weren't kicking tires, they were shopping, and they were going hard on the shopping, like, wow. So, and then everybody that was in the vendors was all local, uh, hand dyeing uh, yarn people. And uh, anyway, it was really a really special time. So here in um, the Maritimes here, um, it is very creative and there's a lot of creative outlets so it's not uncommon to have um, uh, um, stitch groups going every day so there's a stitch group on Mondays where on Wednesdays there's another one on Tuesdays and Thursday I think there's one on Friday and there's one I think on Saturday as well so there's stitch groups all over the place so they're all different but you have to find your jam right so it looks like Jay is joining us wood pigeon is Jay so, uh, and then Kevin's obviously in the house as well. So we're just kind of hooking out today. Just checking my list. So is anybody in the Christmas mood yet to make stuff? I should say gifts. I finally finished the, um, the retro uh, videotaping yesterday and I put it out today. And uh, we have that. So we have Laura in the house, and we have Nicole and Pam. So I saw people were making my tool that I um, that I designed, and I put out the uh, blueprints of that. So you've kind of been working through that stuff. And somebody says my hook is moving fast, sweetie. I don't. I don't got time. If my crochet hook is not doing skid marks, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's just double crochet. It's no big deal. So somebody's going to make an ice skate ornament really soon. So we have our Lake Tahoe retreat in Nevada next week. So I am kind of just going through my SH stuff here. And I just kind of just working my way through what I need to get done before I'm allowed to go. And, uh, that's kind of what I'm working through. So um, DJ is sitting at the the birthing center. Did she say birthing center? It moved so fast I didn't, I think that's what she said. If not, we've got something new going on on this channel. <laughs> so the weather here, the leaves are really delayed on the changing of colors of where I live here in Nova Scotia. Usually, the the big reveal weekend of of um, um just hang on a second daniel's messaging me He usually makes a warm lunch. I'm telling him to pass today. So we have that. Um, so it's 12.43 in my time zone. Um, I kind of want to get this filming over and done with. You know, I feel like it's sex in the city. Let's just get her over with. <laughs> um, you know, he's asking why I pass. Um, Yeah, so I feel like it's sex in the city. Let's just get it over with. <laughs> uh, I have not watched the the new um, series that was Sex in the City. Has anybody watched that stuff? Um, they renewed it for a second season. I think the second season went by. I just can't relate to these women. I think they're just too high maintenance or something. Um, you know, we're all rich and living in New York, it feels like. So 
I'm like, I don't know where they live or, you know, and it's, it is a storyline. It's a plot. It's the whole nine yards, but I just don't feel like it's relatable. And so anyway, so that's kind of what we have going on. So we have Nicole is from Canada, she says. So has anybody got into that Sex in the City, the, the new series that is out? I don't know. That's not my cup of jam. Have you ever crocheted a rag rug? Um, says Olive, no, I've not done that. So Brooke Morrill, uh, Brooke is saying that she, I don't think she's watched Sex in the City either. You're at my club. Um, Traders Canada just started though. So of course we're gonna be glued all over to that, but we have to wait week by week. Who's got time for that? I wanna binge it. But Daniel and I uh, binged the other seasons of I'm doing the damn wrong, the wrong damn stitch. Oh my God. Rip and pull. So I never watched the original Sex and the City. I just saw the movies. Actually, I was really turned off on movie number two. So I think it's kind of what's turned me off in this whole, the whole thing. I got a little bit um, defensive on number two. And, uh, and I got defensive is that they're visiting a foreign country and not honoring the, the traditions of the, of the country. And I felt that was a bit disrespectful. And I know it's a movie, but I just, I just can't get over that. Um, where the women in that country are, are to be dressed head to toe. And yet these women are prancing around in little skimpy outfits. So anyway, I just kind of, I know it's dumb, it's stupid. I, I shouldn't even worry about it because it's a movie, but I just felt like it was a little disrespectful. Um, yeah. uh, I'm excited that Moonlighting has dropped on Hulu. Moonlighting? Moonlighting, what, what is that? Moonlighting, is that like a really old thing, Wendy? Like really old. Anyway, we did uh, um, in the stitch group that we had in the one class, we were talking about Carol Burnett and um, And uh, anyway, the, we had such a young stitcher that they've never, they only, they thought uh, Carol Burnett was a, a drag queen on the, from the snatch game of uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. And all of us are like floored. <laughs> we schooled that girl so fast. So anyway, I ended up running it to the girl's mother. And when I say girl, she was in her early 20s. And I ran into her mother's and I said, how dare you let that girl grow up without knowing who Carol Burnett is because she was so instrumental. So somebody like Moonlight, I don't think I've ever seen Moonlighting, I just remember the name of it. So I don't know. So Wendy is posting a copy of the pattern that I'm working on. So Cara Burnett, I still watch outtakes from her. Cause that whole crew with the outtakes is hilarious. Mrs. Wiggins, you got Mr. Tudball, you got Tim Conway, and what was the other one? Um, why am I drawing a blank? Anyway, those the bloopers are still timeless as far as I'm concerned. So when you're feeling like crap, uh, crap you got to put on a Carol Burnett blooper reel. Is there a tutorial uh, for the pattern that you're working on? Um, no, not yet, because I am making the tutorial right now. So you're in between the takes of the videotaping. So I am. I have to complete up to round number 27 um, before I can continue along. But it, you're in the membership that I saw, so I should have it um, 
later today for you on the membership program as long as I get it done before I have to leave for stitch night tonight. So somebody's making a parasol with the thing, uh, with the, the Mandela. Tim Conway and the old man, oh, especially when he's the fireman. So how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, doing a C to C thanks to the tutorials. So uh, Jenny is, or Jenny is uh, doing that. New to this group, I love Carol Burnett. So yeah, it's a it's a fun group we have here. So oh, Kelly's joining us today. So Kelly and I are going to be joining, uh, having candy together. Yeah. So leave your diet at home, Kelly. So I never went to Stitch Group last week because I was away. So the girls were messaging me from Stitch Group. Uh, so somebody's Lynn's doing the kitty couch. I think uh, Kelly's doing another kitty couch because her little Ben, her cat, wants one so bad. He's, but yeah. Anyway, there's really good outtakes from um, Mama's family too. If you're ever bored in your life and you want to do something and waste time. Mama's family has a lot of outtakes on YouTube as well. So with my friend Kelly, that's here, Kelly Rage. Uh, she's my local friend. People um, at the festival thought her and I are, are brother and sister, or she thought she was family. But she's even better. She's a friend. You know, the family you just can't get rid of. But friends, you pick and choose who you allow in your life or through your front door. Right, right. This is worth being homesick today. This is the fiber tornado. Jax Jax is here. Uh, Lyle Wagner was such a dreamboat. Lyle Wagner. Oh. You know who is really cute, but it's a little bit um Keanu Reeves when he was young he could matrix me anytime <laughs> simulate me be be odd <laughs> oh wait a minute simulation wrong thing but yeah I'd make sure all his bullets hit me Ooh. yeah <laughs> And I and I loved it so bad that I wanted his coat. Yeah, Keanu is still adorable. Can you say yummy? Yummy. Um, I used to think um, the guy that was on um, um, Scully was on Mulder. What's his name? Duchovny. I used to think he was quite yummy too. So, um, and then Scully, Lily, uh, Jillian Anderson, she's in like everything, like everything. Uh, big thank you, your two trips about the yarn. I missed that, I missed it, um, what you said. Love your sweater, can we order them? No, unfortunately. They're done by a high-end place. Um, it's embroidered um, and they don't accept orders from the general public. So Brooke is like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I don't know if that's an oh my god Keanu or oh my god Keanu. Yeah. I'd share his little wet pot in that Matrix movie any day. Hook me up with some wires. <laughs> Big thank you for the two tips about uh, the yarn genie and the other one uh, sure to take out. Um, I can only see a little section of what you write, so I try to keep it brief if you can. Oh, 
my check on my stop off my list. David Duchovny, I love watching X Files because of him. That was a creepy show, though. David in X Files is really great. Yeah. But then you realize the older you get, these actors are getting older, but then you realize you are too. Hmm. Uh, working on three baby blankets doing a corner to corner. Margaret Thatcher. Why is Margaret Thatcher in this conversation? Um, love watching you and alternative knots here on the, on the network. So I'm just hooking away, just doing what I love, love what I do. So you need some more ideas for those little YouTube shorts to be like sarcastic and stuff. I think people are realizing not to message me. <laughs> uh, so I'm making a boho uh, bag on video. I'm just in between the videotapes. So I almost got one person said it's a badge of honor to get a YouTube short with me rolling the bus over them. And uh, anyway, so I've been thinking about stuff like that, but I haven't got anything silly in the last couple of days. Oh, Jillian Anderson played Margaret Thatcher. Yes, she did. Was she any good though? Like that that girl's versatile. Like Jillian is just why. Um, we've been kind of watching that sex education, I think it's called, um, with her in it. It's that series of uh, I forget, I, maybe it's called that, I don't remember. It's whatever Daniel puts on the TV. And then um, we then watched a Disney Haunted Mansion, the latest one. Um, Jillian Anderson's, uh, wasn't she Scully? She was totally Scully. Sex Education is great, so it is that one. So you're liking my big country music award here today. I had to get a shh. Daddy's working. Cats. This uh, puss puss has been bothering me a lot at nighttime. So she's, not the, I get the cat in the bed, in my bedroom. So uh, she comes in naturally. Anyway, she jumps on me all night long. Just, will you show your project uh, lifted up for the camera? So it's the bottom of the bag. I'm just using leftover yarn for this. Do you want to go outside and play in traffic? So I'll tell you a story, a, a salty story, because he's going to get the Bob Barker because of it. Just hang on. Okay, go outside. Go play. So if you're, okay, so I have a story for you. Um, what color is this yarn? This yarn is called um, Driftwood. Uh, Karen cotton cakes driftwood. So anyway, so Scott, um, um, Salty, the youngest one of the two Great Pyrenees that we have, is going to get the Bob Barker, so he bit Daniel today. So anyway, um, Puppy Dog yesterday, for the very first time, last week caught um, a squirrel. So anyway, so that did not end well for the squirrel. So anyway, so then... Um, you know, they're, they protect their property and stuff. So anyway, we were shocked as hell because she has a disability that she was able to get a squirrel. So anyway, the squirrel ends up being a, a science exhibit, like a frog, you know, on a pin board. <laughs> it didn't end well for the squirrel. So it is a fact of life, it's just normal. So anyway, uh, puppy dog yesterday caught a pheasant. So, um, so we're like, okay, this, 
behavior is brand new. So anyway, she caught the pheasant. Salty was really upset about it because she wasn't sharing her pheasant. So anyway, so um, she went and buried it, but he ended up, and so every time he would walk close to it, she would get all like pissy about it, right? So they were, she was on pheasant burial watch. And anyway, so uh, he ended up, she ended up going inside and he ended up undigging it and then buried it somewhere else. And so last night, uh, throughout the day, um, he was on pheasant watch for his burial section. Anyway, so the pheasant came out during the night um, because they were, they were outside during the night last night. And anyway, so he was protecting this poor little pheasant that is long dead by at this point. And anyway, so um, unfortunately, if you get close to these dogs and they have food that they want to protect, it's not, it doesn't end well. So anyway, because he's a male dog and because he's not been uh, bar barkered yet, um, he's a bit agitated. So anyway, so he was really getting aggressive. So Daniel um, went close to him and he bit Daniel. And so um, Daniel came in uh, bleeding. And so he says, you got to get that pheasant off the property, but you can't throw it off into the ravine. You're going to have to put it in a, a bag and we'll have to put it in the garbage, like seal the bag and whatever. So anyway, so um, I went out with the, it's like a poop and scoop, but it's like a pheasant. Anyway, so I had to put it into the bag and stuff. So anyway, so we realized that Salty's just, he's adolescent. He's, his hormones are going off all over the place. And it's a sense of protection of his food source. And, uh, and anyway, so it, uh, so anyway, he got, we called the vet as soon as that happened this morning to get him scheduled for his little Bob Barker. So anyways, that's kind of what's going on around here. So it'll settle him down because he's getting aggressive with the food and it's just a male dominant thing. So puppy dog is the manager and, uh, and salty is just a pain in the ass. So yeah, so that's, so apparently when you Bob Barker, these guys, um, they'll calm right down. So, um, uh, puppy dog was already Bob Barkered a couple years back. But if you pet him in the right way, his little lipstick comes out. So he, he enjoys a good rub down. So Haunted Mansion, uh, Danny DeVito is in that one. So I'm making a boho um, bag. I'm in between video takes at the moment. Then I'm going to go upstairs and make myself a peanut butter sandwich. So they don't always calm down. It depends on their age and how you train them. So um, they're very, um, they're very loving dogs. They're just, they're very territorial. So um, when we have to leave, we have a house sitter that moves in because they don't get moved off the property at all. So they're always here. So Daniel's fine, but he just, just not good because then we don't have very many people here. What does boho, boho is short for bohemian. That's a styling of bag. So it's bohemian, so boho bag. I don't know who comes up with these terms for fashion, but hey, maybe that's my next short. What does boho really mean? Nobody really knows, but we all say it. It's, it's short for bohemian. You ever find yourself so uh, when I went over to your inspirations a few years ago before COVID hit um, I would go in there and you would hear them all talk in corporate talk and so anyway there's a meeting going on and, and I want to talk about something and somebody said let's go offline with this later and I'm like I'm not online I'm here 
<laughs> and I had no idea it's corporate talk for drop the subject. We'll talk privately about it later. <laughs> so I, I get stuck in this lingo of language. And then I find myself repeating stuff like that. It's like, let's go, let's go offline. And uh, meanwhile, you really don't have a clue what it means half the time when you say this shit. But who knows, right? So do you find that with yourself, you hear sayings that you just don't know what it is? But then you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, you have no idea what's going on. Who's on first? So I'm going to see Wendy next week. It's our second time ever meeting her. Um, So Wendy's got the shopping list. She's going to be bringing in some stuff so I don't have to fly it in. Um, so mentally I'm doing much better than I was at the beginning of, this, of the summer. I kind of just fell into this rut and just, um, there's a lot of, baloney happening online too with people just fighting over every stupid little thing and anyway I just kind of fell into that and uh, I'm medicated now but um, so I'm a lot more stable than I was well let's just say I'm as stable as I'm gonna be <laughs> um, so um, that's kind of what was going on so it's a, it's a lot better than it was for sure. So Daniel ended up being medicated now. Now we can deal with each other. So I think everybody's medicated at this point. Just, you know, it's what happens when life gets in the way of all this stress all the time. It's like you just go on like websites and it's like, you know, there's such a good thing. And then they always have to say, but, and it's the but thing of always that negativity and that just like, always second guessing things and it's like oh just drains you so my pill is some kind of anxiety thing but so I don't take things as personal as I used to so Lara is all the way in Nebraska Nature's colors and and the neon brights says Illumini. I may not be bright, but I like bright yarn. Mm -hmm. So I'm not ashamed of being on meds. Um, it just I just have to do what I have to do because I honestly I lost my ability to want to work and help people. And I thought, well, this is a shit way to live. And I thought, you know, what's the point of of living if you don't contribute and help people when you can? And I just lost that momentum of just wanting to help people. And, uh, and I just didn't want to deal with that. So... So the stigma of mental therapy needs to be shattered. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be shattered. A lot of stuff. I think we're all like, I was, Daniel and I were talking about something yesterday and it's like, you know, we, I feel like we're living in a barbaric society where you can't even function without some negativity just coming at you over stuff that has nothing to do with you. And people put their problems on top of other people. And, um, and meanwhile, that has nothing to do with these people, and that's what happens with me. So, so let's just shatter everything. Let's just get some rocks and start breaking some bloody windows. Just tired of it. So I have this thing, and Daniel knows, like, he wants to know what's going on. So if I'm looking at my phone, I'll go, <sighs> And if you do it, you feel so good. Just do it. 
uh, just really like use your diaphragm and just uh, feels so good. And so when you're reading baloney online and somebody posts that they just stubbed their foot on a table, uh, table, you don't care. And it's like, oh, that's not our problem. Posting it on social media isn't going to make it go away. Yeah. So if somebody has a smash room. I need a smash room. So you just walk in the room and pay to smash shit. I love it. How do we make that functional for crochet though? Do we just walk into a yarn, like into a store and curse the aisle for not being organized and ball bands missing? I don't know. People get so bitchy about that with the stores with not being organized or the ball bands and stuff. I'm like, you know what? Well, the yarn comes in and it's all pretty. It's the customers that are doing that. So if you want to yell at anybody, you have to yell at the customers. It's, it's impossible for these employees to be chasing people all the time to put their yarn back. So it's, it's one thing that I fundamentally disagree with, with people giving the stores crap when it's us, the people that are making the mess. And it may not be you, uh, but it, you know, people just don't put, they change their mind and then they put it back in another little pigeonhole or, or even, you know what, some dip, you know, get something from their freezer section and they turn and they change their mind and then they leave something in the freezer section somewhere else in the store that's not even in the freezer. Like that's just, they should be charged for that. Like totally. Have you seen that happen? It just shocks me that people do that. And it's like, it's in the freezer because it's like supposed to be frozen. But I never had kids or anything. But you know, when I go into Walmart, I'm so glad I never had kids. <laughs> so I see these kids like playing tag or something in between stuff. And, I, and though I've never had kids, I'm like, well, there's a vasectomy waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's uh and then I'm like and then you get kids that are acting out and sometimes I think the parents are worse than the kids. Uh and uh anyway I'm like, yep, that's why I never had kids. Because mine, if I had kids, my kid would probably be doing the same damn thing. My mother used to grab us by the, the our collars and just yank us out of the stores. And anyway, the the gift to get us to go there was off the table then. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you later, Kelly. I got candy. So anyway, so um, I was somewhere, and basically the mother, she looked around before she screamed at her kid, and she was looking to see who the audience is. Anyway, we had to watch her raise her voice and their kids were actually pretty okay. And I'm like, that mother needs a timeout. And so I swear to God, and I don't know if you've ever seen something like that, but where the parent is looking for an audience, is that like, and not in a good way, they're not looking for discretion. They're looking for, let's just create a shit show. And it's like, anyway, I don't respect that at all. Nobody wins. Maybe she's trying to go viral with her actions. Well, somebody's got to turn on the video camera for that, and I'm not going to film that crap.
so parents can be way worse. Yeah. I think my biggest frustration as a parent, because I was a step parent for like a few years, my biggest frustration was the kids, and it was and it was the kids that I was watching because they knew the school system would not fail them, and so they wouldn't do their homework and they wouldn't do this and that, and it's like, oh my god. So anyway, so I'd go and talk to the teacher because these kids were spell misspelling the word and a and d, and so the kids in grade eight, and I just went and talked to the teacher. I'm like. I don't understand, like, how is this kid passing? And she says, we just don't fail kids, and the kids know it. So she said, the, the kids are a write-off. So I said, I want to do a surprise visit. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I did. So I got the authorization from the principal to do a surprise visit, and um, I walked into this class, and this class was absolute mayhem. Anyway, so the, the young man that I was um, in charge of, um, he saw me and literally straightened up his desk and sat up like a good boy. And I thought, holy shit. And I felt so sick to my stomach for the teacher. It was complete madness. Anyway, he was very, very upset. Very upset. And uh, so I went in just before recess. So then we broke for recess. And he pulled me out in the hall and he goes, now everybody's going to know that you're, I have a gay dad. And so, because my partner and I, it was my partner's kids. And um, that's what kind of helped finish that relationship for me. I thought, you know what? I'm never going to be an equal if my own um, person that I'm watching doesn't see me as an equal person. And uh, so um, he was crying. He was really upset. And I was really upset too because I embarrassed him. And I thought, you know what? This is over. And my relationship with that finished. It wasn't his fault but it was a realization that you just don't have an equal footing. And uh, and so I'm glad I never had kids when I did that. So anyway, so it was just, anyway, I felt really sad for the teacher. And I just, once I saw that and the kids were just never gonna be failed, I said, you know, why am I pushing my kid to do better when really there's no incentive to be better? And uh, that was kind of the end of that. So I believe in education and I believe a lot of things uh, that a person should really try to push for excellence. And I could not instill that in the kids. It just, it just didn't transpose. So I think it was really hard. So I don't know if any of you go through any of that stuff, but um, it's tough. I just see so, so much potential in some of these kids and they're just wasting it away. But then I kind of wanted to talk because I'm hooked on social media too. And uh, so I think that's the biggest thing. And anyway, oh my God, you know, this is another thing that happened. So um, we got an emergency call from the school. And so we, we had to be in the school within an hour. And so we had no idea what was going on. And anyway, so we got call, uh, called to the school in the, in the um, um, so we got escorted to a classroom which, which was loaded with other parents from the same class. And uh, so I'm making a bag. So um, so we got called in and all of us are like, why are we here? Like what's going on? And uh, so we go in there and this huge group of kids are escorted into the classroom standing at the front and there's my kid that I'm watching. And I thought, okay, what's going on? And it turns out that the boys figured out computer programming and started a website uh, rating the chess of the girls in their class and posting it online for a rate system, a rate their... Anyway, so they had uh, taken photos of the girls, uh, in, including the teachers, um, the women teachers, and they posted it online and made a website to rate their anatomy. Anyway, all of us were just stunned. These kids were in grade seven. Anyway, it was just wild. So it's amazing what these kids can do with the internet way back then. That was so many, that was over almost 20 years ago. It's a long time. Yeah.
right, so parenting is not easy. So I am making, and the yarn is Karen Cakes, and I'm making a, a bag tutorial right at the moment. I'm just in between the video takes. Lawrence says, hey, honey. So Wendy's responding. How does she get a crown? How come, how does she have a crown, Wendy? You have a crown by your name. How did you get that? So on that whole idea of uh, with the kids raiding their chest. So anyway, about a year before that, um, the grandfather of this child was really quite a, a masculine piece of work, treated women like meat. And anyway, so he had a girlfriend and he was literally treating this woman like crap. And uh, so he would joke about her, her looks, whatever. I'm like, you know, you, you have a relationship with this woman. They were dating. And anyway, so uh, the young man that I was watching, we went into the house and, uh, and uh, I said to him, I said, you're never to talk to a woman like that, like ever. And, uh, and he goes, but she's laughing. And I said, I want you to look at her laugh and her smile. And when she's truly smiling and when she's fake smiling, and I told her to look at her eyes when she is laughing. Does she feel the joy or is she just laughing just to, because she's uncomfortable. And so we went back out and he looked at her face and, uh, and then we went back in and she, and she, he says to me, she's not laughing. And I said, her body is laughing, but she's not laughing. And I said, she's being humiliated. And I said, you're never to talk to a woman that way. And, uh, and I said, you don't ever do that, ever. And anyway, so it was like kind of a wake up call. And I said, if you ever wanna know how somebody's feeling, just look at their eyes because their eyes don't match their actions. So Daniel's um, out in the tractor. That's what you're hearing. If you're hearing anything at all, just him buzzing around in the tractor. Uh, Michelle says, "Thanks for showing the young man that. You know what? That you you got to point it out." A child doesn't always know better. And to be intuitive and to be, uh, um, have empathy. Empathy is huge. And I, daddy's working, the daddy's working doesn't work with, um, Daniel. <laughs> First time catching alive. I'm in the middle of nowhere, isolated. The kids have no respect for adults. It's sad. Yeah, 
I don't know what to say that I never had kids so I just I was just a step parent just for a short time in my life and it was the hardest thing I ever had to do and I would never do it again and I think it's because I've never had kids I haven't developed the patience um, so last night I was uh, teaching uh, children at the Sea Cadets and I was scared as hell to go and uh, and so I told the one young girl she was 14 and she goes we're not scary people and uh, So I, she goes, we're not scary people. And I said, no, you just don't understand. I just, I just never around kids, it's just not my thing. And I said, I never had kids, so I don't really know how to interact with kids. And then our channel, if you ever look at our about section of our channel here on YouTube, I don't, it clearly states that it's an adult based channel. Oh my goodness, I just got a few more rounds left and then I back to filming. Daniel's outside, he's moving soil and stuff like that and rocks today. So a few short weeks and then it will be winter here. Uh, I'm working on, I am working on a boho um, granny bag. Just a little market tote. So it's kind of a granny square, but then it's kind of not. It starts off as a granny square, but then it's got a really weird row that changes it into a really interesting, interesting shape. So people keep asking me about that particular part of the pattern, so that's why I'm filming it. So I can refer them to the video on how it's done. Daniel keeps looking at me as he drives by with the tractor. He's like a peeping Tom. Tamara from Moogly is just messaging me. festival has just they have a news article going out with the TV so a question came up from a crocheter what is the best size crochet hook for a king size blanket on your yarn. Um,
Okay. Actually, I don't even think a whole video was needed for this. I think I just had to answer two lines of questioning. But go big or go home, right? So anyway, he listens to uh, CBC radio in the um, um, in the tractor when he's out there, and he's got this air conditioning on if he needs it or the heating. And anyway, he just listens to the broadcasts on radio, just to, as he's moving stuff around. So Wendy, uh, I was kind of tired of the questions. It's the same question too every time. It's the two rounds, which honestly it makes sense. It does just I actually kind of see why they're asking the question but um, it's explained right it's just not that clear if that makes any sense I think a little diagram would have been helpful But then, you know, you provide a crochet diagram and people get all like. The pattern you're working on is definitely adding it to the make list. So it's a great little pat uh, pattern just to be able to. I started like not too long ago, like what, a couple hours ago. So it's a fast pattern. And the yarn's just changing color when it wants to, so I'm not even worried about the colors. Would have been kind of neat. Oh, actually, Kelly was doing colors. She was intentionally changing the colors. I don't got time for that. I just want to, there's some projects I just want to let the yarn just do its thing. It turns out nice, right? <laughs> hey Mikey, uh, we all learn differently. Yes, absolutely, I agree with that as well. Just, I just, you know what I, you know, I do a crochet diagram not because to inconvenience people and it's like I do it just to make sure that people have the resources and yet you get people that hate them so much that the, the first verbal people it's like the diagram they're terrible I can't read them it's like you know what it's not for you it's for everybody else and I get so sick and tired of that it's like you know if you don't need some kind of resource you don't need to bash it right Anyway, I'm a very visual person. I need my diagrams. So Leslie is in my, my love club. She loves diagrams. I do too. The diagrams to me are just a non-colorful afghan when I look at it. So, and the diagrams take time to make, like, so it's not just like wham, bam, you know, get it done. Like, it, they take time to make, so when I get bashed for making them, I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. So. So, actually, my, I just realized my pattern book from when I was a kid is actually on my desk. So this is the actual real book from when I was a kid. So um, this was the first book I ever bought when I was 14. And I had this book until I was 30. So it was the only crochet book I ever owned until I started the crochet crowd. But my problem is, is that I was not a good pattern uh, reader. So I looked at the diagrams. So I learned to crochet using the diagrams. So this book has diagrams for everything. And so I never realized that um, the 
crochet actually had written words because I never read the words. I just looked at the diagram and then I matched it with the stitch symbol that was at the back of the book. So, or at the front of the book, one of the two. So they had all the symbols all marked. And so this is how I learned to crochet. And so everything was based on charting and stuff like that. And uh, just everything I learned, right? And so anyway, that's how I learned. And so when I started the crochet crowd, um, then I uh, had to learn how to read patterns. Actually, that's not my book, this one. Sorry. So this one is actually my book here. So there's two books. They're not the same. So this is my original book. It still has my price tag, Lewis Craft. And how much was the book at the time? It was twelve seventy five, and that is going back in eighty. I learned in eighty eight, nineteen eighty eight. So there's that. So this book is not the same. It looks the same, but it's not. <coughs> and in this book, uh, what they have here is why um, because there was Canadian. Um, it was like one treble into the next stitch and it's a UK based book. So because I was Canadian, I learned how to do crochet with Canadian or with the UK language because that's what it was done in Canada. So this book here is an updated book and this book has the US terms. So there's a difference of the terminology between the two books. So anyway, a friend bought me this um, Americanized version of it, but this was my original book. So many memories and I actually have um, notes that I put in this book when I was, I was learning. Yeah, it's my antique, just like me. So you may actually find pattern books where there's two different versions and you have to look whether it's North American terms or UK terms. So everything I know came from that book. So because my mom only showed me how to do a chain or a double crochet. So anyway, so, so I thought crochet diagrams was on everything based on that book, but apparently not. But Yarn Inspirations is one of the few companies actually maintaining that resource. So that's why they're a really good partner for me to partner with because they believe in the same thing that I do. The more resources and free resources people have, the better chance that people have to learn. So anyway, that jackets that I made last week is behind me here on the mannequin. That's the hexagon uh, that's on our channel, the hexi cardigan. I actually do have a short about that one. Um, at the show, somebody um, says, how do they convert uh, a, a five-sided cardigan to a hexi cardigan? I'm like, Cause so they called it a pentic cardigan because they actually missed one of the sides. So anyway, they did it all and realized they only have five sides instead of six, and so they want to know how to make it as a cardigan. Um, you can't, you got to frog the damn thing. So anyway, so they asked me if it's possible to make a hexacardigan with a pentagon, and I'm like, it's called the pentagon for a reason. <laughs> anyway, we had a good laugh, right? So anyway. Uh, what make of the hook that you're using? I love the long handle. It's just a generic from Amazon Canada. Um, there's no brands on my hooks at all. And the hooks I think are $13 for a whole kit of eight or nine hooks. And I think there's free shipping too. Um, I don't think you can, I don't think amigurumi needs to be diagrammed. I think some things can be. Um, the pattern that your inspirations is thinking of having me doing some of it is diagrammed out. But I have to make the doll size uh, amigurumi 
jacket for Santa Claus. And then I think there's a doll size dress for Mrs. Claus as well. And I think some of it with the is diagrammed out. Yep, so I'm just blazing away. I'm in between video takes. So I'm going to have lunch after this. It's, it's, what time is it? My time zone. It is now almost two o'clock my time zone. So I'm going to break for lunch shortly. So we have the chimney sw uh, sw uh, sweeper here this morning. Um, somebody that I knew actually burned their house down with not cleaning their chimney. And anyway, their chimney caught on fire and lit their house like a match. Anyway, ever since that, uh, we make it a point to hire a chimney swe uh, sweeper uh, before we start our, our wood burning. What are you and the puppy is going to eat? Uh, the puppies will eat whatever I'm eating. <laughs> They'll beg for snacks, of course. So anyway, so the chimney swift was here and it only took 45 minutes, so it was pretty good. Um, we have a new person joining us. Sunshine's joining us live. I try a pencil hold and I just cannot get the hang of it. It's like my, yeah, the pencil hold is not a natural way of holding stuff. So maybe that's why it is, right? So maybe you just gotta let yourself off the hook. Yeah, so if you ever burn down your house because you didn't clean your chimney, you know, it's something that in retrospect is such a cheap investment. And, uh, and you can never recover from it unfortunately once your house burns down so it's not like a redo where you can say oh i should have got my chimney swept uh, cleaned i remember that actually when i was a kid our neighbor's chimney caught on fire and didn't burn down their house but you know it's a it's a reason enough to make sure they keep things clean so we have to order in our wood that hasn't we haven't got our wood yet for the season but uh, we go through, I don't, I don't know what the size of it is, but uh, it's, we order the wood every two years. So what, what we get this year, we'll use next year as well. And the linen bent from the dryer. Yep. So Kim lost her house to a floor spider. A friend of mine actually just did as well. Almost a forest fire almost cannot be helped, but a chimney a chimney is something that you can pretty much control to a certain degree. So the chimney cracked. God, that sucks.
So Wendy, I'm going to be finishing up just shortly here after the end of this round. And then I'm going to break for lunch and So the colors I'm using, um, what was it called, clay? It, and I, it's probably discontinued too. Um, it's um, Karen Cotton Cakes. I love this yarn a lot. Oh, driftwood, drift, that's what it is. Midday slump, um, no, I probably just have to have lunch. It's two o'clock lunch and probably a cup of tea. So spring is there in the south, cannot wait for summer. You know, I love the drastic season changes. Um, am I gonna come back after lunch? I don't think so. I got, I have to continue filming. So I have the bag handles to start filming up and I still have round number 28 to do. Um, so I think I'll head right to filming after lunch. I was at the very base of the bag and then I'm basically doing the repeat so I have the bag ready to film for the next steps. Have a wonderful day. You also have a wonderful day as well. And thank you everybody for joining me. I'm going to be wrapping up in just a few minutes or moments. Pray about the next three minutes and I'm done. and thank you for them it says fiber tornado yeah well you're going to keep getting them regardless if people don't like them and i wish everybody is a great afternoon and i don't think i have anything else to report remember with crochet it's not about your speed so don't be looking at other people say i wish i could crochet at that speed um make sure your journey stays yourself and make sure you don't devalue your creativity because you're not the same as everybody else because everybody's unique in their own way right okay so we're gonna see you later we hope you have a good one and have a great afternoon journey member our journey members i'm gonna try to get this out later today in the tutorial format and everybody else can just wait until the schedule goes out and that's it for today. See ya.